have a look at how we do this. We um, set the database URL. stdenv var is a the quick and easy way to return a um, a value from um, attached to that key from the environment variable list um, database URL. And the question mark there says if we don't find a database URL, bail out because that's a fatal error. Connecting to the um, connecting and creating the pool is pretty easy. SQLite pool connect, give it the database URL, and we're in async land, so you await it. And what this does is it gives the uh, database um, the actual database layer SQLX time to talk to talk to SQLite, make sure the pool is actually up, return back, and once again question mark bail out if we can't create the database pool because that's bad. Um, SQLX has migrations built right in. So if you have the SQLX CLI command migrate command, um, so, sorry, migrate directory set up, then using SQLX migrate macro with the exclamation mark dot run and give it a reference to the connection pool, will run whatever is in your migrate folder. And if you're on a persistent database, it actually creates a migrations table, tracks where you are, makes sure it doesn't it, migrations don't get run twice. In this case, we're in memory, so we want the we want the migration to run every time. And so with that said, we say nothing went wrong, okay, and we return the connection pool that we're creating. Okay, so now that we've got a database and when it starts up, it's going to get the structure, it's going to get the database rows, we can start filling out our, um, functions that actually retrieve data from it. Uh, from row, which we added to the book structure, is a really, really helpful uh, function, but it's worth noting this is not an ORM, an object relational mapper. It's not like the days of Hibernate. You can't um, retrieve your structure in a variable, change something, and then magically update the database. Um, it's it's a helper. It just uh, takes the data, um, matches by um, column name matching field name, populates the structure. But it lets you make the uh, uh, the read part of CRUD very, very straightforward. Um, so you create a public ASIC function called all books. It will, re it will receive a, re um, a connection pool. So a uh, connection pool is designed for you to either send by reference or clone around. It's got an arc behind the scenes. It's designed to be easy to spread it around. And because it's an arc behind the scenes, you can be sure that there's only one connection pool and you're not going to accidentally make another 50 connections to your database in different parts of your program. And we're going to return a vector of books, which we're wrapping in a result so we have a chance to record if something went wrong. And the SQL itself is very simple. Select star from books, and we're going to search by title and author. So SQLX namespace query as function. The only strange thing here is what's called the turbo fish, which is the two um, greater than less than angle brackets. Um, you specify two types. We're using underscore, the placeholder, for I don't really know what type goes here, figure it out, and rest well. Um, in this case, the first type is actually the um, representation of the type coming from the database. We don't need to know that, but we do need to specify the second one because we want to receive our result in the format book, uh, which is the structure we created. So that's easy enough. We call fetch all, which executes the whole thing. Um, does the mapping to each of the structures, populates that into a vector. We await, give the database a chance to run, bail out if any errors occurred. Boom, you've got a list. You've got a list of all of the books sorted. Likewise, book by ID, we is the same thing, except we take an ID number. We use SQLX's bind syntax, for $1 and then bind ID. Those have to those line up, and that prevents any sort of SQL injection happening. Uh, we fetch one record, and we await it. We send it back, and so um, depending on how you're counting, that's either uh, you know one line of code inside the function or four, um, because it technically each of those dots and another one is still part of the same line of code, but very very short, very sweet, to the point, very simple. Hi, I'm Herbert Wolferson, Arden Labs' Rust trainer. If you'd like to see more Rust content, click subscribe to our channel and be notified as it arrives.